even though you can find the dynamic range specs of your sensor online. It's always good to run a test for yourself so that you are comfortable with how far above and how far below middle gray your camera can cope with before it clips the blacks or the whites. This is also the test that you really wanna do if you wanna incorporate Ansel Adams zone system into your exposure analysis. In fact, Ansel Adam describes this test himself in his book, The Negative. He recommends using textured backgrounds, one with some detail in it, or using a screen mesh or a closely knit fabric. And that's what I'm gonna use here. In this test, we'll be interested in the detail we can resolve between a really dark and a really bright exposure. Ansel would have tested this using a single film type at a time, so we'll keep our ISO fixed like he did. But remember, that the dynamic range decreases with increasing ISO. So you should test at multiple ISOs or at least the ones that you use most often. We want an aperture not wide open, but perhaps a few stops down. I'll choose f5.6. Now we can run through shutter speeds from the slowest that produces a pure white image with no detail whatsoever, and then increase the shutter speed in one stop intervals until you've had a couple of frames that appear to be completely black. If you run out of shutter speed, you can always start reducing your aperture settings in one stop intervals. The dynamic range is the number of stops that show any detail at all. On the computer screen, we can see the texture of the fabric. We can visually assess the detail in the image, but we've also got the histogram that shows us where we have detail. And this particular shot has all the data right in the middle of the scale. All we have to do is go along until we find the very last image that has any detail in it whatsoever, like this one here. I can see the still detail on my screen, even though that might not come across in the video on YouTube. One stop less exposed, everything's black and clipped. And in the zone system, we'd call that zone zero. We do the same thing for the high exposures, looking for that very last image that has detail, which is this one, and then going one more image that has zero detail and that's the other end of our exposure range. The completely white and the completely black images are end markers, but any exposure that has any detail whatsoever is part of the dynamic range. In this case, I've got 12 stops of exposure with some detail in. Of those 12, those middle eight zones have enough detail in them that I can adjust them to middle gray in post-processing and the image will have complete detail. For whatever camera you have, you now know how forgiving your sensor is to exposure errors and how many stops you can cope with in a high contrast scene before you've got to resort to something like exposure bracketing.